Let's take a look at another factor ring. Let's go ahead and just like we did before, let's say we've got Rx is the set of polynomials with real valued coefficients. And I want to create the ideal generated by x squared plus 1. So that is, again, the set of all polynomials times x squared plus 1, where the polynomial comes from the real valued polynomials. Okay. Before we get into how to do math in here, let's actually consider something. Let's say I had a polynomial something like 4x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. And let's go ahead and take that plus x squared plus 1 to generate an element of this r of x mod the ideal generated by x squared plus 1. This is certainly an element there, but again, we know that in this factor ring, the elements kind of collapse down. One way we can figure out how this element can be sort of expressed in simplest terms is to actually do a polynomial division. So let's say I have 4x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 5, and I want to divide it by x squared plus 1. All I need to do, I look at the x squared and look at the 4x cubed. I know that if I multiply by 4x, I get 4x cubed plus 4x. If I subtract that whole thing, this cancels out. I get 2x squared minus 7x. I can then put a plus 2 up here. So that's going to give me a 2x squared. Now let's go ahead and bring down the plus 5. I've got a plus 2. When I subtract, I've got negative 7x plus 3. So what does this, this division actually tell us? It tells us that this 4x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 5 is the same thing as 4x plus 2 times x squared plus 1 plus this kind of remainder negative 7x plus 3. Well, the whole point of this is that this is already inside my ideal generated by x squared plus 1. So, this whole big element here is the same thing as the remainder bit, the negative 7x plus 3, plus my x squared plus 1. Now, if we think about that process, though, always when I divide a polynomial by x squared plus 1, my remainder at the end is always just going to be a linear function. So, we can think about it as the polynomials mod the x squared plus 1 is really the set of all ax plus b plus the ideal where a and b are real numbers. Every element will simplify down to something like that. Okay, well then how do we do arithmetic in this factor ring? Well, addition is easy. If I had ax plus b plus 
x squared plus 1. And I'm going to add that to cx plus d plus x squared plus 1. Basic algebra is just going to say, again, we're adding these things on the outside, I get a plus c x plus b plus d plus x squared plus 1. And that's already going to be as simple as it gets. But what if I'm multiplying? If I have ax plus b plus x squared plus 1 plus or times cx plus d plus x squared plus 1. If I FOIL these things out, I get ac x squared plus ad x plus bc x plus bd plus the x squared plus 1. Again, I just need to take this outside part, multiply it together, and just FOIL it out, and then that being added to our ideal. Of course, this simplifies, but more than it simplifies, it's no longer in simplest form because of this term right here. So, how can we go ahead and simplify that down to get it down to just the linear factor in front? We could go and do the polynomial division, but that's going to be a little bit confusing with all this a's and d's and stuff like that going on. Let's think about it this way. x squared plus 1 is effectively our 0 for this whole thing, which means that x squared is the same thing as negative 1. So I could then write this thing as ad plus bc times x plus bd, since x squared is negative 1, minus ac, and of course plus our ideal x squared plus 1. Again, I suggest you look at some more examples of this. Maybe try and do this with some specific numbers in there to see what's going on. But what this effectively does, this factor ring is isomorphic to the complex numbers. Because of this x squared equals negative 1, if you look at the way this multiplication operation works, it's exactly the same way that multiplying complex numbers works.